That's right, today we're talking macronutrients. When you're done watching this video, you're going to know what macronutrients are. You're going to know how to read a food label. You're going to know a good template for your body type, or at least a place to start off proper with the right macronutrient ratios for you. We'll chat a little bit about where to get your macronutrients from, how to track them, and set it up for your individual goal. Here we go. All right, so what is a macronutrient? Um, you need to know that macros are a term you get, you hear in the gym or whatever, but macros are simply protein, carbohydrates, fats. These are the things that we use to stay alive for energy, for restoration, for nutrient transport. You need all three. Now the ratios of those three are gonna differ based on your body type, and obviously your goal, I hope to break that down today. You're gonna wanna know that there's a percentage of each macronutrient that your, your whole diet should make up. And that percentage is largely individual. And you might have to even tinker with those percentages to evaluate how you feel, how you perform, how you recover, and how your body is, uh, how your body's looking, your composition, and everything else that's important to you. When you look on the back of a nutrition label, you need to be able to see the total grams of the macronutrients. So there's three categories on the back of a food label I want you to look at specifically. The total grams of fat for that serving, the total grams of carbohydrates for that serving, and the total grams of protein for that serving. If your food that you're eating doesn't have a food label, good. That means you're eating real food. You know, things that you can pick off a tree or dig out of the ground, the perimeter of the grocery store, meats, vegetables, nuts, seeds, some fruit, little starch, zero sugar. You've heard that in maybe CrossFit terms, but all in all, we're trying to get you to eat real food. But chances are you're gonna have some food that has a food label. You need to understand how to look on the back of a food label. And you need to understand that the Food and Drug Administration allows for up to like 20% error or margin of error on those food labels. So they're not exact. Understand this and move on. You need a food scale if you're gonna track macronutrients. You can get a cheap one off Amazon for 10, 20 bucks. You can spend 50 bucks. It doesn't matter to me. Get a food scale that will allow you to measure in grams and in ounces. Also, when you measure food, it's a lot easier to tear your food. So for example, if you take a jar of peanut butter, take the lid off, set it on your scale, tear it to zero, then reach in and grab the amount of protein you thought you were gonna take, it'll tell you how much peanut butter's on your spoon. You would want 16 grams. Or in this instance, you can really tell what's on the actual spoon. Same thing with the plate method. You can put a plate on the scale, tear it to zero, and then put your big chicken breast on there, and it will tell you how many ounces are in that chicken breast. Now, navigating my fitness pal. You guys are smart, man. You can download the free app, I think Under Armour might still own that app, it doesn't matter, but it should be free, set up a user account, and then you need to learn how to search food, scan food labels. If your food doesn't have a label, you can find the specific brand. Maybe it's you know, Tyson Chicken versus Simple Chicken, or whatever brand of chicken you're using, you should be able to look it up or manually enter it and then manipulate the ounces so that your serving sizes are correct and you're monitoring and you're measuring your food. Let me just summarize measuring food. You will get better at doing it over a couple of weeks. However, if you ever stop measuring food and you have a long gap in between measuring, your eyeballs start to skew. Pretty soon, three cups of broccoli will look like this and one cup of ice cream will look like this. So you have to, what I say is just recalibrate your eyes periodically, myself included. I will start measuring food, I'll go through a, a couple weeks of measuring food again just to refresh my memory on what actual serving sizes look like and it's really helpful to track with an app so that you can look at the total picture at the end of the day that way you have no one else to blame but yourself if you're not putting the right foods in the, the right ratios plus if you're measuring it you can make tweaks and tinker until you figure out what your body is digging the next biggest step is to determine your basal metabolic rate now tim jake and i all went and got our measurements done with an end body. 
And if you didn't see that video, I'm gonna link it in the corner right there. You can watch that first video. That one is the first step to the off season. And some of you commented, wow, that those body fat percentages sounded off. Like it had me at 4%, Jake at 8%, and Tim at 32%. I do believe Tim is Tim's measurement was real close. I would say Jake's probably not quite 8%. He's probably around 12%, and I'm probably more around 8 to 10%. Um, some of you typed out some keyboard wiring, and I understand that, but the the premise was to have a machine do it and consistently measure it. And that machine can compute a good place for us to start with our basal metabolic rate. So mine being 1800 calories for my basal metabolic rate. That's how many calories it takes to keep me alive in a 24 hour period. So if I meet that goal of 1800 calories and don't move, I shouldn't change or lose weight. But you have to add in that I train five to seven days a week and that I'm up and down stairs all day and I move a lot. So then you have to kind of figure out, well, okay, what is your goal? So my goal, and we're just gonna focus on me, then we're gonna focus on Jake, and then we're gonna focus on Tim. I am a mesomorph. We're gonna define the three body types because Jake is a different body type than Tim. Tim is a different body type than me, and all three of us are great prime examples, and maybe you'll fall into one of those categories. As a mesomorph, I am fairly stocky. Um, it's easy for me to kind of to have muscle and I'm very active uh, I'm not long and lean I'm not big or round I'm just kind of that blocky middle of the road mesomorph at 152 pounds at the time of weigh-in my basal metabolic rate was 1800 calories because I'm a mesomorph I'm going to give myself based on those numbers I'm going to give myself 500 additional calories so that'll put me at 2300 to probably maintain where i'm at at 152 however i wanted to gain a little bit of muscle and keep my fat the same or gain a little bit of fat i don't mind being around 10 to 12 percent body fat so i want to go from 152 at four percent according to the in body machine to probably closer to 162 to 165 at 10% body fat. So here's a good way to calculate this and I'll put it up on the screen. I don't fall under the sedentary category. I don't really fall in under the moderate active category. I work out more than five times a week. So I'm probably gonna fall under the very active category. My goal is not to lose. My goal is not to maintain. My goal is to gain. So I'm gonna move all the way over to that number right there. And it gives me a range between 18 and 22. I'm gonna go right in the middle with 20 as my multiplier. So I'm gonna take 20 and I'm gonna multiply it by my current body weight and that's gonna give me 3,040 calories a day. All right? So we were, think, we were figuring out my basal metabolic rate was 1,800. I added 500 calories that to get to 2,300. That was gonna be kind of my goal to maintain. And if I don't wanna maintain 152, which I don't, I'm gonna have to eat an additional five to 700 calories a day, which would put me around 3,000 calories. So you could go off the BMR route, or you could use this calculation here like I did where I'm very active, I took 20, times my body weight at 152, I got 3,000 calories. So now I have a calorie goal of 3,000 calories a day. Have I lost you so far? It's pretty important that you get your measurements done. It's pretty important that you figure out what it is you want to do, then identify how active you are and try to get that baseline number for calories. I will give you an example of Jake's and I'll give you an example of Tim's in a second. So let's take the 3,000 calories. I am a mesomorph. I do really well off a ratio of 40% calories coming from carbohydrates, 30% calories coming from protein, and 30% calories coming from fat. So take 3,000 calories, multiply it by 40%, and that is gonna be my total of carbohydrates a day. We know that one gram of carbohydrate yields four calories. So take that number of carbohydrates and divide it by four, and that's going to be my total grams of carbs a day. I'm going to eat five times a day, and I'm going to have every meal and counter be the exact same macronutrients. So I'm gonna take that number and divide it by five meals a day. That is my goal for carbohydrate grams every time I sit down to eat, and I'm going to have five food encounters a day. Let's move on to protein. I'm gonna take 3,000 calories a day, multiply it by 30% of my protein intake. I'm gonna get 900 calories coming from protein. Divide 900 calories by four, 225 grams of protein per day. 
divide that by five, that's gonna be 45 grams of protein per food in counter. Let's move on to fat, because fat's just a little bit different. Take 3,000 calories a day, multiply that by 30%, 900 calories coming from fat, divided by nine, that's right, one gram of protein yields nine calories. I'm going to have 100 grams of fat a day, divide that by five, and I'm gonna have 20 grams of fat per food encounter. So every food encounter, five meals a day is gonna look like this, and that's based on my goals and my body type, and then it's up to me to read food, nutrition labels, jot, journal my food into my fitness pal, and at the end of the day, I can see if I'm hitting these macronutrients, I can see how am I performing in the gym, how am I recovering, how are my energy levels, and am I actually getting the results? I can do an in-body scan probably every two to four weeks to see if I'm moving the needle, increasing in muscle, and not just getting fat or getting soft. Let's move on to Tim and let's use his numbers for example. Okay guys, so producer Tim is an endomorph. Endo is just, man, I would say these are people that easily gain weight, easily, or you know, they look at a carbohydrate and they feel like they gain weight. There are people that um, aren't hard gainers like Jake. Um, they're somebody who, you know, maybe is a little more sensitive to carbohydrates, somebody who typically is just kind of big boned, if you will. That's Tim, man. Tim could have played football. He's just a big dude. So he's your classic endomorph. Tim weighed in at 258 and he had a goal weight of about 230. Tim's body fat percent was 32% and his, according to the in-body scan, his basal metabolic rate was 2,088. Let's just say 2,000 for easy math. So Tim needs to take in 2,000 calories a day. If he were to sit on this box for 24 hours, that's what it would take to keep him alive, okay? Obviously we know Tim works out four, probably four times a week on average, I know that. Um, he's got a job where he is on his feet instructing, but he also edits video and sits on his keister a lot. So we're gonna give him a moderately active score. He's not sedentary, he's not super active, he's just in that moderate activity level, working out three or four times a week. We're gonna take into account that basal metabolic rate of 2000. We're gonna give him an additional 500 calories on top of that basal metabolic rate to support you know, exercise and things like that. So 2,500 calories a day would probably still put him at a deficit if he worked out consistently where he would probably see the results he's after. But you can also use this other calculator multiplier. I'll give you guys it right here. Tim's goal is to lose. Tim is moderately active. So we're gonna take that number 12 and times it by his goal weight of 230. 230 times 12 is gonna put him right around 2,700 calories. So both ways got him real close to that 25 to 2,700 calories. I'm gonna go with 2,700 calories as Tim's goal calories for the day, but here's where Tim's gonna differ from me. We're gonna suggest, based on Tim being an endomorph, that he gets 35% of his total calories from protein, 25% of his total calories from carbohydrate, and 40% of his calories coming from fat, Let's calculate his macronutrients now. So take 2,700 calories, multiply it by 0.35 or 35%. That's going to give Tim's total calories a day allocated for protein. Divide that number by four, and that's Tim's total grams of protein per day. Tim is not gonna eat five times a day. I know him. He's gonna be a three or four times a day. We're gonna try to get him to eat four times a day. So we're gonna take that total grams of protein a day and divide it by four. That is his protein that he needs to take in at every food encounter four times a day. Let's move on to carbohydrates. Take 2,700 calories, multiply it by 25%. That's how many calories from carbohydrates he's going to have a day. Divide that number by four because one gram of carbohydrates yields four calories. Divide that by four. That's Tim's total grams of carbs per day. Again, I want him to have four meals a day, all equal, divide that by four. That's how many grams of carbohydrates Tim should have at every food encounter times four a day. Let's do fat. Take 2,700 calories, multiply it by 40%. That's how many calories a day he's gonna have from fat. Divide it by nine because one gram of protein yields nine calories. That's how many grams of fat Tim should have a day. Divide it by four. That's how many grams of fat Tim should have at every food encounter. So we have Tim's macronutrient ratio. Again, 35% coming from protein, 25% coming from carbs, and 40% coming from fat. And we broke it down so Tim can just focus on four meals a day, each meal constituting that. That's for Tim's body type. 
and we're going to have him try that for a few weeks, hitting these numbers, making sure he eats enough, and I think he's gonna see great results. Let's move on to Jake. All right, guys, so Jake is your classic ectomorph. Ectomorph is those classic, you know, hard gainers, long limbs, lean, naturally lean, that's Jake. Um, and so we're gonna give him a prescription based on that body type. So when he had his basal metabolic rate tested, he came in at 179 at 8% body fat and his basal metabolic rate was around 1,975 calories-ish. So we're gonna round that number to 2,000 just so I can do simple math. So Jake's macronutrient prescription based on that body type, we're gonna give him 25% of his calories coming from protein, 55% of his calories coming from carbohydrate, 20% of his calories coming from fat. Because Jake got a basal metabolic reading of around 2,000 calories, we could easily give him another 500 calories to support exercise and that he's a welder, he does manual labor, but the bottom line is 2,500 calories is still probably not gonna be enough for someone who's got his body type. So let's go ahead and use the little calculation here. So Jake is, his goal is not to lose, not to maintain, it's to gain. And then under the categories, he is not sedentary. He is more than moderately active. He's very active. He works out twice a day, at least four or five times a week. He has a physical job as a welder. He's a very active dude. So he's gonna be in that category of that 18 to 22 for gaining. We're gonna start with the number 18 and we're gonna multiply it by his goal weight. So he weighs 179. He wants to get a little bit bigger. It's hard for him to gain weight. So we're gonna use his goal weight of 185, multiply it by 18, and we're gonna get a calorie goal of 3,300 calories a day for Jake to accomplish his goal. Let's figure out his macronutrient ratio based on him being an ectomorph. 3,300 calories times 25% coming from protein gives you this number right here. That's how many calories a day is gonna come from protein. We're gonna divide that by four. That's gonna give Jake's total grams of protein per day that he needs to hit. We're gonna assign Jake to eat six times a day hopefully all equal meals. So we're gonna divide that number by six and that's how many grams of protein Jake needs to have per food encounter as long as he gets six food encounters a day. Moving on to carbohydrate. We're gonna take 3,300 total calories and 55% of those calories are gonna come from carbs. So times 0.55 gives us this number right here. We're gonna divide that number by four because one gram of carb yields four calories. That's how many grams of carbohydrates Jake's gonna have a day and divide that number by six, and that's how many grams of carbohydrates we want Jake to have per food encounter. We're gonna have Jake get 20% of his calories from fat, so we're gonna take 3,300 and times by 20% or 0.2. That's how many calories a day Jake's going to have from fat. Divide that by nine, because one gram of fat yields nine calories. That's how many grams of fat Jake should have per day. Divide that number by six, and that's how many grams of fat Jake should have at each meal. I don't think Tim would do that well as an endomorph with that much carbohydrate. Conversely, I don't think Jake would do that well without the carbohydrates. He needs them. Two completely different body types. So what are you? Are you an endomorph like Tim? Are you big boned, tend to be bigger than your average Joe? Are you like me, a little shorter, compact, a mesomorph? Or are you more like Jake, a little longer, leaner, Ectomorph. This is just a starting point, but we wanted to do a video proper so that you could dive into what are you, what's gonna be best for you to get to your goal. The bottom line is, you need to go get an in-body scan or a DEXA scan or have a personal trainer, somebody give you a skin full body fat test, get something measured. Find, and I'm gonna leave links into this chart for you to figure out how active you are, what your goal is, what your goal weight is. I hope you can pick the right number for a good, clean goal weight, and then calculate, get your total calories, find which macronutrient profile matches up best with you, and then experiment, tinker with it, and see if that's gonna get you to where you wanna be. Stick around, guys, because on the next episode of this series, we're gonna break down which supplements we're going to take to backfill our nutrition, uh, what foods we're going to put into our bodies 
Part three is gonna be more detailed on the actual foods and supplements that we're gonna to take to hit to our goals. We're putting ourselves out there, we're telling you our goals, we're putting the work in, and this all comes down to, we wanna be the best possible versions of ourselves for our family, our friends, our, our coworkers, but we also want to be healthy to chase elk in the mountains this year and hopefully multiple years down the road. Thanks for watching. Tap the sub button, comment below. Let us know if you hate this video or if it makes sense. If you have questions, reach out to me. My contact information is in the video description. God bless you all. Separations in the preparation. We'll catch you on the next one.